Hello everyone, my name is Hubert and welcome to Teach Me channel. Today we'll be looking at GCSE Biology Risk Factors in Non-Communicable Diseases. So last time we talked a bit about health and disease, how we have communicable diseases and non-communicable diseases. Today we'll be focusing a bit more on uh, non-communicable diseases, but in particular we'll be looking at risk factors. So I will explain what risk factors are and how, how they affect non-communicable diseases and how it all works together. Again, it will be a bit of a sort of discussion type of a video. So I decided to lay this one out as well as a mind map. So without further ado, let's get started. So first of all, here we have risk factors. What are risk factors? Risk factors are certain factors, certain uh, lifestyle choices or uh, genetic factors, natural factors that, that uh, increase the risk of a getting a certain disease but they do not um, ensure that you will get a disease. So, so they increase the chance, so they make you more likely to get a certain disease, but they do not ensure that. They, will, they are not 100% type of a thing. So let's have a look at how risk factors essentially work and what, how they can be classified. So first of all, we have um, natural factors such as genetics or or even um, which could be single genes or it could be multiple genes working together to convey the said risk factor or it could be lifestyle factors such as exercise and uh, diet so for example lack of uh, exercise and a high fat high sugar diet increases is a risk factor for type 2 diabetes. Conversely, a lot of exercise and a healthy balanced diet reduces the risk of someone getting type 2 diabetes. But like I said, it's a risk factor. So if somebody ha leads a sedentary lifestyle and uh, has a diet high in fats and sugars, that does not necessarily mean that they will get type 2 diabetes. It's just that they are at a higher risk of getting that disease, unfortunately. So lifestyle plays a very big factor in terms of risk of people getting various diseases. Now, another type of risk factor could be environment. So things such as air pollution and asbestos. So even if somebody doesn't, uh, even if somebody has a, what we would consider an active and uh, lifestyle and balanced diet, they still may be exposed to higher risk of getting certain diseases due to the environment that they live in, such as uh, if somebody lives in a polluted city with air pollution, they of course uh, have higher risk for, for getting various cancers and things as such. And same with asbestos, if people breathe in asbestos regularly, that uh, damages their lung, lung fiber, that damages their lung fibers and also can down the line increase the risk of getting cancer unfortunately and again that's not a 100% given thing that's just a risk factor so of course these risk factors interact so that's very important because uh, usually if somebody gets a certain disease it's not due to them sort of uh, exhibiting a single risk factor it's usually a number of risk factors working together. So, for example, a person could come in uh, and be unfortunately diagnosed with a cancer. And usually it will not be because of one single um, risk factor that they exhibited. It may not be just because uh, they, um, they were obese. It may actually be a number of things coming together, and that's the most common reason, number of things coming together that increase the risk of a disease and then eventually leading to person having the said disease. So that person could, for example, be obese and they could be smoking and also they could be drinking a lot, which all three of these are risk factors for, for cancer. So this is very important to see how these risk factors interact together 
and how it's usually not a single risk factor, but a number of risk factors acting together on an individual. So what, is, what could be the impact of um, risk factors? Well, we could have local risk factors where, for example, there is uh, air pollution in a single region in some coal mining town. There could be a higher air pollution and it's affecting and that risk factor could affect uh, the local region, the local region consisting of certain amount of people. So that's a, that could be a local impact. L impact could also be national. So, for example, a nationwide pollution, uh, a nationwide air pollution uh, from large scale operations that impact the quality of air, uh, use of cars that do not have all the necessary filtration systems in place that minimize the air pollution emitted by cars. And in such case, we could get actually air pollution, but on a national level. And we could go one further. We could get air pollution on a global level. For example, if a massive, massive, massive volcano erupted at some point, it could, for a certain amount of time, globally affect the air pollution levels on a global scale. So this is important consideration that the single risk factor may have different impacts. It may impact people, a single individual, or it may be a local impact, it may be a national impact, or it may be a global impact. So the next thing to discuss in terms of risk factors is the cause. So we, we have certain risk factors that directly contribute to the development of the disease. They have a direct cause. They act as a direct cause of the disease. And we have risk factors that uh, may not directly be involved in causing the disease, but instead they may be just merely correlated with a disease. And correlation does not always equal causation, as you probably know. So let me think of some examples. So in terms of direct cause, for example, in terms of uh, risk factors for cancer, smoking would be classified as a direct cause because uh, the changes that, that smoking evokes in our lungs are directly involved in uh, propagating and initiating the cancer as a disease. So smoking would be direct cause of cancer as well as a risk factor. So this is now kind of maybe getting muddled, but so smoking, I will clear this up. So smoking may be directly causing cancer, but that's not to say that everybody who smokes will get cancer. So smoking remains a risk factor, but it's a direct risk factor. Now, what about the indirect causes? Well, uh, let's talk about cancer. For example, indirect risk factor for cancer would be a sedentary lifestyle because obesity is also associated with cancer. So the sedentary lifestyle increases the risk of a person being obese and therefore that increases the risk of the person having cancer. So that's more of an indirect risk factor, but nonetheless, it's still a risk factor. So... The final thing we need to discuss here for today is the cost of these risk factors and the cost of the non-communicable diseases. And that cost is massive. And it's split into two different categories. So the first category, and that is, by the way, the most important category that we cannot simply overlook, guys. And that is the human cost of non-communicable diseases. Non-communicable diseases all around the world cause a lot of uh, pain for these people. It causes a lot of morbidity, a lot of difficulties in those people's daily lives and uh, require a lot of treatment that, act, that may not be the most pleasant for those people themselves. And ultimately, unfortunately, non-communicable diseases have claimed millions of lives across the globe. And that is a, the single most important cost of non-communicable diseases before we even move on to anything else at all. Human cost is massive when it comes to non-communicable diseases. 
Also, the second type of cost we have is financial. So treating those uh, non-communicable diseases gets expensive. And that works on many different levels. So it may be expensive for the individual to afford their own treatment. So that's a big financial burden on the individual themselves. It may also be expensive for local councils uh, f trying to combat the risk factors that contribute to disease, trying to minimize the amount of people that are getting those diseases by perhaps launching some educational programs or some healthy diet initiatives and things like that. That all costs money. And so that places burden on uh, local councils. And also on a national level, National Health Service is, uh, in UK at least, National Health Service is the institution uh, tasked with treating those diseases ultimately. And of course that costs money, uh, procuring uh, drugs for people uh, who present those diseases, uh, supplying those people with drugs, perhaps some surgical interventions, that all costs money. All kinds of treatment costs money, and that places a financial cost on National Health Service as well. So, of course, this highlights the importance of risk factors in, in uh, terms of non-communicable diseases, because a lot of uh, these non-communicable diseases can be Reduce the risk of them can be reduced or even sometimes outright uh, prevented by minimizing the risk factors that people exhibit. And this requires people to work together as individuals. People need to be making uh, the individual choices and need to be aware of the potential impact their choices could have, whatever their final decision may be. But also uh, work together with... Um, local governing bodies as well as National Health Service to overall lower the risk factors for the entire society for pretty much any non-communicable disease. Uh, that will be the ideal world scenario and that's hopefully we'll get there one day. So this is it for today guys. Thank you very much for watching my videos. I really appreciate when you guys watch my videos. This is why I love doing this. If you want to see more videos like this on GCSE Biology physics as well as chemistry and maths hit the subscribe button below don't be shy and if you got any questions whatsoever make sure you ask me in the comments i will try to get back to you as soon as possible thank you again for watching and see you next time